Hi, and welcome to another Dolphin Financial Radio Show with me, Dan Wendell, owner of the Dolphin Financial Group. And today's topic for the podcast is, well, you can read it if you're watching on YouTube, retirement is bad. <laughs> no, it's not, but I'm going to talk about five reasons why retirement stinks or five bad aspects of retirement that we really don't talk about very much. And to help me make sure that this isn't a totally negative show, I'm going to bring in my always positive sidekick, Tony Shore. Tony brings the levity to the show. I'm bringing the realism. Today's t topic, Tony, is going to be real. We're going to talk about five things that aren't so good about retirement. Wow. Okay. Kind of another twist, another spin from Mr. Dan Wendell, uh, Mr. Financial Services Professional, who likes to kind of go against the grain and really make people think. I love it, Dan. I love it. I'm excited about this. And you don't know what they are yet because you're no, not retired. Nope. You don't. Well, you know, we have a little thing we call show prep, which I did not do today. So that's no. good. In fact, no. speaking of that, hang on a second. I've got to, I got to get myself something to drink here. Hang on. Oh boy. Oh okay. man. See the <laughs> listeners on the podcast. Just kidding. Uh, they may not know what that, that, but that was a sound effect, but the viewers <laughs> saw Tony wouldn't do anything there. So Tony, uh, my goal today is to go over five things that people don't think about that are negative retirement in hopes that they can avoid them. Maybe you can keep it positive by either downplaying them <laughs> <laughs> or giving some ideas on how not to fall victim to these. Are we ready for this? <laughs> wow. Okay. Hit me. What's the What's they're, the first one, Dan? They're not in any particular order. Oh, okay. But they're and not this is this is a retirement focus show, and financial is a lot of times. But this first one's not financial. So let's let's talk about it. Number one, you might get bored and or depressed. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a so, big one. I, I can see that happening for a lot of people. Absolutely. When you retire, well, we talked about in previous shows how people, their main source of retirement income is going to be working. doesn't work that way. The idea of retirement is you leave your workplace, right? But the problem is for many people, the workplace defines them. So what they do for a living defines their life. So when they leave, they kind of get depressed about that. Well, what am I doing now? How am I contributing? But also, the workplace is their social outlet for many people. That's yeah. where their friends are. That's where yeah. they can be social creatures. And, um, you know, the, the COVID crisis showed us that, you know, people say, oh, I'm, when I retire, I'm going to golf. I'm going to be fine. I'll get sit and read a book. I'll sit by the sure. beach on the pool all day, right? I'm going to play 18 holes of golf every single day. Right. And I'm going to go by myself and I'm going to sit and read, right? Right. Then COVID happened and people were forced to stay home and not interact with their coworkers who they uh... used to disdain. And they start to say, well, you know, depression has gone up for kids, everybody. And I, has, I have a feeling that's because the social aspects were still were stunted and i don't think people realize how much that can play into retirement yeah yeah that's that's a serious one and you know especially when so much of your life was work um and i mean you're talking 40 hours plus a week some people work 60 70 80 hours some and 10. and <clears throat> <laughs> Ah, uh, Dan, come on now. Um, no, I put in the full 40. Trust me. Uh, maybe not always more than that. But uh, but yes, um, I think that uh, it is. That's why as long, I'm that's why I'm praying my voice holds out my entire life. You know, if I still have a decent enough voice at 80, I don't mind doing this. I mean, you know. Uh, but, and, the, but you're a social guy. You're, you're yeah. a friendly guy. You're the, the life of the party. So even in the work environment. And, you know, I know a couple of your coworkers listen to this, so I'm yep. not going to name names, but, you know, some of those people rub you the wrong way, but you're still a happy-go-lucky guy in that <laughs> environment. So. Nobody. I get along with everybody. I have no problem with anyone. But, um, yeah, I love this, and uh, but other people um, may not. It depends on the person. But I, I don't care who you are, whether you think you love people or hate people or love your job or hate your job. 
when you don't have anything to do all day or you think, you know, it's you can you can sit and read for only so long and you can play golf for only so long. You have to do other things. Right. And you can't sit on the couch and watch TV all day. And some people are thinking that all sounds great to me, uh, but not for 24 seven. I mean, right, it doesn't right. work 24 seven for the rest of your life and retirement. People are living longer, Dan. I think you have to, when you talk about these things, about what makes retirement tough, especially the social aspect, I think you also have to include in that the time frame, 20 to 30 years of that. Right. I mean, it's one thing to go six months. Hey, I can take a year off my job. It's first year retirement's great. I traveled a little, I played a lot of golf. Uh, then what? After the first six months, then what? Right. Right. And you, and you define yourself by work for 30 years. But it, yeah, the, the key to this is it's not going to be overnight. You're not going to retire and have all sorts of new friends. You're going to have to go out and redefine yourself and travel or join clubs and, and do stuff. Yeah. Instead of sitting around or else you f will fall victim to becoming depressed or bored. And it's it's a real thing. You or know, one physically, the... you'll deteriorate a lot Absolutely. quicker and won't, and won't be able to enjoy your retirement. I mean, we talk about my grandfather, who's 100. Yep. I mean, his his secret has just been you got to keep going. Right. I mean, he had this first major medical setback recently. Uh, he had a pretty big stroke. But even he's like telling the nurse. You know, his his speech is coming back and he's like he's in bed while he's talking to you. No one's around making him do it. He's doing these. Well, these are exercises with my arms to get back. And he's telling my dad, now, don't move that tractor out of the machine shop until I get back. And we're going to put that engine in there. Right. I mean, he's 100. Right. He's in the hospital after a stroke talking about what he's going to do when he gets out. Bossing around his 70 something year old son. 78 right? year old son. <laughs> right. 78. <laughs> so See, that's how you live in North. Footsteps. That's how you do it. That's how you, you know, do it. One other aspect of this that uh, people don't realize is um, they some people might be married for 30, 50 years and then they retire and they don't really all of a sudden they realize who their spouse is. And I, I've seen this a lot. Um, believe it or not, I've seen people go back to work because their spouse can't stand them being yeah. at home all the time. Think about yep. it, like right now when you go home, you say, hey, honey, I had a great day. I had a meeting with Dan. We did a podcast. Right. Yep. All good things. Right. And then she tells you about her day and maybe complains about things. And then you go to sleep and or you talk about the kids. But then the, once the kids are gone and then you, you don't have work to talk about, what are you going to talk about with your wife? Yeah. For you, it might work. But for some people, they're like, geez, I'm married to this person. Get yeah. back to work. You know? Yeah. Yeah. My parents, I'm going to throw them out as an example and under the bus, so to speak, because uh, my dad was an over the road truck driver for years and years, over 35 years, you know, of their marriage and or more 40. Um, and so he would be gone like two weeks at a time because he worked for a division. Of, uh, he worked for uh, Andrews Van Lines, like North American Van Lines, where he'd go pack somebody up in this big truck and he'd take his semi from Minneapolis, Minnesota to L.A., move him out to L.A. and then pick somebody up in Sacramento and move him over to Chicago. And so he might be gone for two weeks at a time. So my mom uh, got used to that. And so people ask her, they've been married 60 years. And so, uh, they're like, okay, uh, you've been married almost 60 years or not quite 60 years. Uh, how'd you do it? And they said, well, we spend a lot of time apart is how we had a happy, that's how we had a happy right. marriage. So, and now she, she, uh, when he retired or had to retire, uh, because is it back and other things? Uh, she's like, go out and work in the shop, work on the farm with your dad, go out, do something. You got to get out of the house. <laughs> so exactly. that's how they make it work. She kicks him out. <laughs> so it's a real thing. It's a real thing. So not re retirement is all, all puppies and rainbows. It, right. You know, right. So. But right. I mean, you find ways to deal with these things. I mean, we're not, uh, there are bad things about retirement, but it's not the end of the world. You can make right. it work. People, but people don't talk about this. People don't talk about this that very much. So yeah. that's why I wanted to bring it up. All right. Number two, healthcare costs are higher. We've done a show. I'll put it up here on the cost of healthcare. We've talked about that. But the, the key things here is what a lot of people, first thing they realize, uh, people know that when they get older, they need more health care, right? They, you're, you get older, things start to break. Yep. But what, they, what really hits home is when they retire and their employer stops paying for their health insurance. And all of a sudden they get that COBRA bill 
or they're like, wait, I have to shop for my own health insurance and it's costing, why does it cost twice as much? Or even when, after they hit 65, they think Medicare is going to cover it. We've talked right. about this, right? but guess what? Guess what? Medicare to cover everything costs money. Right. I mean, part A, part A is free, but that's, that's just if you get hospitalized, it covers the right. majority of hospital bills, but not even all. Right. We, we, we did a show. I'll put that up here. We talked about the cost of Medicare, and that surprises yeah. people. Uh, it and costs money. Let's, let's not forget long-term care. Oh, Medicare doesn't cover long-term care. So that's another bill that people, you know, that's Memory a bad care. part of retirement. That's, yeah. a, that's a really bad part of retirement. Is yeah, I mean, it healthcare. can cost up to $12,000 a month to be in assisted living memory care if you're in a decent facility. Uh, and that is mm -hmm. just, I mean, if you wanted to leave any money to your kids or let your spouse have any money, it's that's bye-bye to all that money. I mean, and exactly. that's not good. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big part. And Healthcare I think, is huge. um, being aware, understanding Medicare in and out, getting the right Medicare plan, shopping that and, and, and talking about long-term care, coming up with yeah. a plan for long-term care. That's the way to solve this one. But I don't think it's going to get any better. I think healthcare costs, but just because you, like your grandfather, he's a hundred, you know, who, who expected that, you know? So yeah. I think people don't. He did, but that's it. He would tell you. <laughs> but, but, right, right. People do <laughs> realize healthcare issues, but it's, it can be scary. Don't yeah, be too scary it about it, but right. It can be. All right. All right. Number three, inflation feels worse. All right. Hmm. So we've done a show on inflation. I'll put that up here. We call it the silent killer. Yep. And inflation is creeping up uh, in 2021 now. We're talk there's going we're going to do a show on it when it comes out, but Social Security might have an increase well above average, you know, which is whoa, that's great. Social Security is going to be an increase of 6%. What's that all about? It's because inflation, right? Healthcare inflation is a lot higher. Um but why inflation feels worse is because you're not working anymore. Mm. So you're not you're not bringing in that money. Plus offset. you're on a fixed, you're more of a fixed income, fixed income. So you're like, okay, I got this income coming in, but now all of a sudden the price of gas is, is over five bucks. What's that all about? You know, I'm not bringing in any more money, but if you're working, you're like, all right, I'm, I'm going to have to get a raise or something like that. So inflation kind of feels worse when you're older. Now you don't have to as many years to deal with it, right? Cause you're older, right. but. Um, so I would say inflation is worse for younger people, but at the same time, there's still that earning power and retirement is all about not working. So I think people don't realize that inflation can really hit home harder when you're retired. A lot of people yeah. don't know about inflation, but they, they yeah. know about it, but they don't really address it. So what well, you need to do. It's an issue right now. I'll tell you that if you're in retirement right now, this is a really bad thing. Right. Oh, and you get a 6% increase in Social Security. That's not going to cover it. it yeah. It's not going to cover the health care costs from the, the one we just talked about. And it's not going to cover just general. So <clears throat> what, what people need to do as a solution to that is they have to take a portion of their savings, their retirement savings, and invest it for a longer term. Take a little bit more risk because those will go up higher to combat inflation. And that's counterintuitive. So um, we did a show, I forget how long ago now, probably like five years ago, called uh, in, uh, Retirees Need More Risk, which is counterintuitive. But the right. idea was, as you get older, you say, oh, I got to slow down. I got to take less risk. But in, in reality, inflation is always going to be there. So you have to actually take some more risk with a portion of your money to combat right. inflation. Yeah. Inflation's okay. a big one. That, that is one thing that's bad in retirement, that's for sure. Two more. Do you have any guesses as to what... Uh, what well, let's be... see. We've covered health care costs. We've covered inflation. We've covered depression and boredom. Boredom. Uh, another problem in health uh, in retirement, um, running out of money. Yes. Income. Yes. All right. So the next two have to deal with that. So the first one, <clears throat> number four, you have to start spending your savings. Which people aren't used to doing. <laughs> they don't like it. Yeah. Right? They Especially like seeing that, that money in those... That money market account or that 401k or that IRA, they like looking at those numbers. Did it go up this year? I've got this much. I've got this much. I've got this much. Uh, but yeah, they have to do a 180, a complete reversal of their thinking instead of using your income 
uh, for savings. Now you've got to start using that savings for income and people, people can't, right. You've talked about no, that. That's a disconnect, right. right? It's, it's a change. It's a change, a big change, especially yeah. the more you save, the more, the less likely you are to want to spend it. Right. Yep. Right? There you go. Yep. <clears throat> and, and people don't like the required minimum distributions. They hate them. Don't the government shouldn't tell me I have to touch my retirement saving. <laughs> right. Well, what are you saving it for? Really? Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I often, you know, I, the people are struggling and it's raining out and they're like, I have my rainy day fund. I got to save for well, it's raining, right? So let's start spending it, right? Mm -hmm. I think people have this disconnect and they don't, they know how to accumulate because they've done that. And they know how to save, they just don't know how to decumulate. They don't know how to spend, right? right? And retirement is really about spending down your assets instead of building them up. And yeah. that's, you're right, that's a huge disconnect. So that's why it's bad because people don't like to spend money. Now, there's some people who just love to spend. But, you know, a lot of people say, I have no problem spending money. Oh, did I raise but, my hand? <laughs> but but you mentioned the biggest fear people have. It's not dying. It's running out of money. That's sure. number five. Yeah. So, by yeah. the way, having to spend your savings, the, the way to combat that fear or that dislike is to actually have a spending plan. It's to a lot work easier. with a financial services right. professional. I'm not going to name names Dan Wendell, but you need to set up a meeting, get a spending plan and an overall retirement income plan. That's right. what will that's what can remedy this bad aspect of retirement. Right. Just having it on paper saying, here's yeah. how much you're going to make, yeah. here's how much you're going to spend. Oh, oh, okay. So I I know I'm going to spend this. Can I can I go on that trip? Yes. Let's budget it in. And then people feel better about spending. But normally people hate spending. So Right. Yeah. Having a plan. And the last but not least, Tony, number five, people start to worry about running out of money and time. Sure. I threw the end time in oh, there time. because, because, you know, time, because that's a biggie. You know, my, my dad, I remember talking to him about getting older and I said, oh, you know, the big 65 Medicare He's like, no, that didn't bother me. 60 didn't bother me. 50 didn't bother me. He's like, 70 bothered me. Hmm. 70 bothered me. Huh. You know, when I talk to my dad now, I think he's 70 is the now. new 50. I don't care. Right. And I talked to him. He's like, yeah, I, you know, I went because he, he tries to stay active. He goes to social clubs. He's sure. like, yeah, the old timers at the club. And I'm thinking to myself, you're 80. Who's the old timer? Tell me. Yeah, really? Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. but it goes back to your grandfather. <laughs> he's he's the old timer, right? <laughs> yeah, it's true. He is. Your dad yeah. at 78 is the young guy, right? What? Yeah, that's what's funny about that whole situation. <laughs> what's that put you the the baby so you know people are worried about running out of money this is the old thing you know um i'm gonna die destitute no one wants to burden their kids no one wants to go in a nursing home no one wants to be pauper but um it's a, it's a kind of an unfounded thing i would i say you you should be more worried about running out of time and that might help you with number four which was you don't want to spend yeah, if you true. if you think I'm not I'm not going to be able to have enough time, I'm going to be too old to climb the 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 steps at Machu Picchu or whatever. Well, then sure. do it now before yeah. you know you you will run out of time. Um, I think people run out of time before they run out of money. I don't have many clients that actually run out of money, and that's by design. Some people just I don't want to run out of money, so we make sure they don't. But I even challenge people to spend their money, and most people don't. They just. Hmm. I'd, I'd love to see, I really truly would love to see my clients spend their last dime and have the check bounce at the funeral home. To, uh, it's, it's a joke, but I, I mean it. I, I, what are you taking it for? What are you keeping it for? Sure. You can't take it with you. No, you can either spend it or leave it. Right. You, you, either, you either have uh, something important to you, like kids or grandkids, and that you want to leave something to them, or you spend it, but you cannot do anything else. You cannot right. do anything else. Yeah, you're saving it until you're in the ground and then not knowing or caring what happens to it. That's not a good option. No. I mean, what did you no. work so hard for all those years? Right. And and people tend to change. If you're starting to run out of money, your 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 nest egg's going down, you'll 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 change. You'll you're gonna be forced to change. You'll adjust. And you'll yeah. adjust. Um Running out of money is not an unreasonable fear because there are a lot of ramifications to running out of money. You don't want to. So I don't think people are being mis 
misguided when they fear of running out of money. Because there is sequence risk. I'll put the video for that. That's a big yeah, factor. That's a big you know, one. especially hey, I just retired. I'm 63, <clears throat> and then the market crashes. That I mean, all of a sudden you could find yourself in a bad spot. But you can easily play defense against this. You could easily, no matter what, Tony, no matter how much money you have, I could create a plan where you don't run out. Now, you may not spend as much as you wanted to. You may yeah. not be able to do the things you want to, but I could show somebody a plan that says, you're not going to run out of money. Here's how. Here's what you're going to... They might complain then, well, I don't get to do the things I want to do because I don't have enough. Well, that's a bigger problem, but you're not going to run out, right? So I think this fear is number one. I don't think it should be. I. But again, if it wasn't a problem, then I wouldn't have a job, I don't think, right? I, right. You know, people in retirement would need guidance. But <laughs> right. I think... This is a biggie, and this is one of the things that people don't like to talk about. It is a fear, but hey, let's address it, you know? So, yeah. conclusion, retirement isn't rainbows and puppies all the time. It should be, right? It's supposed to be your right. golden years, right? Um, there are the five things we talked about. There are certain things that people need to be aware of, but just being aware of them, is probably the, the first step and then coming up with a plan. Once you come up with a plan to address them, even if that plan is, oh my goodness, I don't have a plan. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I guess I'll call up my uncle. Sure. You know, he's, he's a hundred. Maybe he'll help me out. Um, even if that's a plan, at least you have like, all right, I know there's a problem. I know I have a shortfall. It's a lot easier to address it than to bury your head in the sand and do the ostrich thing. You know, the ostrich has to actually do that. I've never Googled that. That's, see, that's something that Google would be useful. Do ostriches actually bury their head in the sand in the face I, of danger? I, I think they do. I, I, I mean, they, they must do something. to. There is a bird that buries its head in the sand. Uh, and I don't know if it's because it's looking for bugs or it's ashamed or that's how they sleep. But... <laughs> <Shamed. laughs> no comments on my background for the YouTube listeners, Tony. What do you think? What do you think of my background? What do you, you, you like it? I absolutely love it. Um, by the way, uh, looked it up. Ostriches bury their heads in the sand when they're scared or threatened. That makes just no sense. But wait, why again... it's not true ostriches ah. don't bury their heads in the sand they won't be able to breathe but they do dig holes in the dirt to use as nests for their eggs yeah see exactly like well that's so that's weird again, right so ostriches shouldn't neither should you don't bury your head in the sand take these problems go head first with them see what it did there head first and tackle them right yeah yep exactly so, retirement will be a wonderful adventure and we'll do it together <laughs> was that like a Harry Potter thing? Something? I, I have I have no idea. Retirement costs money. Yeah. It does. It does. <laughs> and more money, more problems, right? Yeah. So. Mo money, mo problems. Yep. Exactly. Well, Tony, there are the five. I you know I like it. Not depressing, I mean, right? No, We're I mean, obviously those are five main areas of concern in retirement. Uh retirement isn't bad overall, but those things can make it bad. You just have to have a plan in place. Right. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. We'll end on that note. Thanks for a good show. Anyone uh, have any other negative aspects of retirement that they want to talk about? Send us an email. Go to Dolphin Financial Group. There's a radio podcast button, and you can actually fill out a form. And Tony and I get it. You can actually call call us too. The number will come up here. There's an extension. I think it's extension five, and you can leave a message for Tony and I, and we could talk about it on the show. Yeah. So yeah. let us know. Maybe we'll do, like I said, we talked about this. Yeah. Maybe doing some listener comments. If shows, you give but... us permission, we might even be able to play the message on the show, but we'll at least talk about it. If you oh, have a question a or some, a comment, uh, we'll bring it up on the show. There you go. And if you want, if you don't like your voice, because a lot of people don't like to hear their own voice, we can have Tony do a voiceover. He's really good at that. Sure. <laughs> I'll just, I'll do some strange voice or we'll have your kids your kids yes. could read yes yeah, speaking readers of readers questions readers comments and you'll have your kids come on and read them there i mean as go. long as there's no expletives yeah right. keep it yeah. clean you my know, kids wouldn't kids. know what to say anyway they don't yeah, they don't right. know those they words. wouldn't understand <laughs> on that note let's see what they have to say about this all matters discussed in today's show are for informational purposes only this show is not investment advice 
The Animal Nor Dolphin Financial Group are affiliated or endorsed by any government agency. Investment advisory services are offered through Dolphin Wealth Management Inc., a registered investment advisor in the state of Florida. Insurance products and services are offered through Dolphin Insurance Inc. Dolphin Wealth Management Inc. and Dolphin Insurance Inc. are affiliated companies doing businesses as Dolphin Financial Group. You should talk to someone at Dolphin Financial Group before implementing any of these strategies or ideas.